On October 21st, 2021, a Mooney M20J lifted off a quiet grass runway in coastal North Carolina with a father, a friend, and two kids on board. Seconds later, the wings started to wobble, a stall horn blared, and the airplane fell back into the trees before even reaching the halfway point of the runway. The crazy part? The engine was perfect. The weather was perfect. So what single overlooked decision made before the takeoff roll even began created an aerodynamic trap this airplane could never climb out of? Let's find out. Let's set the scene with just the essential facts before we break down what really went wrong. The pilot, William Will Roberts, 62 years old from Apex, North Carolina, wasn't some rookie. He had years of experience behind him, but extremely low recent flight activity. That detail, by the way, will matter later. With him was Willie Jamie Hobbs Jr. and two minors who survived with serious and minor injuries. It's a heartbreaking mix of family and close friends for a casual flight on a sunny afternoon. Their aircraft was a 1980 Mooney M20J, a fast, sleek, retractable single. Fantastic airplane. Efficient, responsive, but also famously unforgiving when you start pushing its aerodynamic limits. And on this day, it was departing from Holly Ridge, Topsail Island Airport, which is nothing more than a 3,591 foot dry grass runway. No pavement, no fuel service, just turf and trees. The takeoff itself wasn't dramatic at first. On both the witness video and the onboard camera, you hear the Lycoming engine humming smoothly at full power. The airplane lifts off, but instead of climbing away, the wings begin rocking. There's a subtle left drift, then that stall warning horn kicks in. Seconds later, the Mooney drops into the trees. But here's the thing. The real accident didn't start in the air. It actually started minutes earlier, Maggie, before the throttle even went forward. Maggie, come here. One of the most crucial and least glamorous parts of flying is weight and balance. Everybody knows it's important, but very few pilots truly respect how brutally unforgiving it can be. And this accident is a textbook example. When the NTSB ran the numbers using actual occupant weights and realistic fuel assumptions, the Mooney came out either very close to maximum gross weight or potentially over it, depending on how much fuel was still in the tanks. But honestly, whether it was slightly under or slightly over isn't the real story. The real danger was where that weight sat. The aircraft's center of gravity was calculated to be near the aft limit, the single worst place for a CG to be during takeoff. An aft CG makes the airplane feel lighter on the controls, sure, but in the most dangerous way possible. It reduces pitch stability, meaning the airplane becomes far more sensitive to small pitch inputs. It increases the risk of over-rotation, where you unintentionally pitch the nose too high, and it raises stall sensitivity, because at an aft CG, the wing is already closer to its critical angle of attack. If you visualize the CG envelope, this airplane was basically sitting right at the edge, inside the envelope, but close enough that it behaved differently, less predictably, and with far less margin for error. And the moment you combine that with a grass runway, you get a perfect storm. Grass increases, rolling resistance, and slows acceleration. A heavy, aft-loaded Mooney needs every foot of performance it can get. So even before the pilot pushed the throttle forward, the airplane's aerodynamic safety bubble was already extremely thin. And then another crucial pre-takeoff detail sealed their fate. Here's the part that genuinely makes your stomach drop. The Mooney M20J's POH is crystal clear, set 15 degrees of flaps for takeoff. No debate, no special conditions. This is the standard configuration. Yet, the NTSB found the flap jack screw at zero degrees, meaning the airplane took off with flaps fully retracted. On pavement in cool weather, lightly loaded, you might get away with that, maybe. But on a grass runway with a near max or over max load and a CG sitting toward the aft limit, this is where things turn from risky to truly insane. Flaps aren't just about getting the airplane off the ground, they give you lift earlier at a lower airspeed, and they dramatically improve your initial climb gradient, the one thing you desperately need when there are trees right off the end of the runway. Without them, the airplane takes much longer to rotate, much longer to climb, and when it finally does leave the ground, it's only barely flying. And this is where we introduce the term that really explains what happened, the mush stall. It's not the dramatic wing drop stall you see in training, it's a quiet, sneaky condition where the airplane is technically airborne, but the wing 
is operating at such a high angle of attack and with so little excess energy that it can't climb. It kind of floats, barely hanging onto the air. So yes, the Mooney lifted off the runway, but it wasn't actually climbing out of ground effect. It was flying in a deceptive, razor-thin margin between lift and stall, and with those flaps retracted, that margin was basically non-existent. The airplane lifted off, but it wasn't really climbing. Here's the part that really shows how brutally honest aerodynamics can be. On the onboard and witness videos, you can hear the engine running smooth as silk. 2,700 RPM, exactly what a healthy Lycoming should sound like on takeoff. There's no misfire, no hesitation, nothing that suggests a power loss. And that's important because it tells us the airplane didn't lose power. It simply couldn't use it effectively. Once the Mooney lifted off in that flap up, aft loaded, configuration, it had almost no excess performance to work with. Its acceleration was already compromised, and the climb energy, what little it had, bled away instantly. So the airplane entered a regime that pilots know all too well, but rarely see outside training. High angle of attack with insufficient airspeed. Basically, the wing is trying to produce lift, but it's being asked to do more than physics will allow. Then comes the stall warning horn. And I've always said, when a stall horn sounds that close to the ground, it might as well be a fire alarm going off in a locked building. You simply don't have the one thing you need to break a stall, altitude. To stop a stall, you must pitch down, reduce the angle of attack, and let the wing reattach airflow. But pitching down at 30 or 40 feet above trees, that's not recovery. That's impact. And the Mooney makes this situation even less forgiving because of its high wing loading. That's one of the reasons Moonies are fast. They've got small, clean wings, but high wing loading also means they don't tolerate slow speed, high AOA flight very well. They don't float like a Cessna. When a Mooney runs out of lift, it doesn't give you these long, mushy warnings. It just stops climbing, starts settling, and once the stall develops, the recovery demands altitude you simply don't have. By this point, the airplane wasn't fighting the trees, it was fighting gravity itself. And gravity was winning, but another factor made control even harder during those last seconds. Now let's talk about something that's harder to see on video, but shows up clearly when you understand the aerodynamics left turning tendencies. The FAA teaches this from day one. At high power, low airspeed, and high angle of attack, airplanes naturally want to yaw and roll left. Torque, P-factor, spiraling slipstream, gyroscopic effect, they all pile on at the same moment. And the only thing that counters that is right rudder, used aggressively and deliberately. Witness footage shows the Mooney drifting left and the wings wobbling. At the edge of a stall, that's a classic sign of a pilot not quite staying ahead of the airplane with rudder input. And before anyone jumps to conclusions, this isn't about blaming the pilot. It's about understanding why it happened. Remember his recent flight history, one logged flight in the last 14 months. That's not rusty. That's deep corrosion of instinct. Your hands and feet forget the timing. Your sense of pitch and sync rate dulls. And here's the really dangerous part. You can have thousands of hours and still fall into this trap if you're not flying consistently, it fools experienced pilots because they feel competent even when their reflexes aren't. And then add a subtle human factor. He's got family and a friend on board. That creates a natural urge to not overthink the simple stuff, to get everyone settled, get airborne, and let them enjoy the ride. It's extremely frustrating because these situations don't feel dangerous at the time. They feel casual, normal, routine. But routine is where complacency hides. And the dangerous combination of low recent experience, high power, high pitch, slow airspeed, and an airplane already flirting with its aerodynamic limits makes that left yaw and wing wobble. Not just likely, but almost inevitable. Put together, every layer of the envelope was shrinking, but from the outside, everything still looked normal. And this is where everything comes full circle. When you step back and look at the whole picture, it's almost surreal. The engine was perfect. The weather was perfect. Flight controls, intact. Nothing failed, nothing broke. There wasn't a single mechanical reason this airplane couldn't fly. Instead, the fatal mistake wasn't just one mistake. It was one condition amplified by several others until the airplane had no safe path forward. You had a near max or over max weight, a center of gravity pushed toward the aft limit, Flaps set incorrectly for a performance critical takeoff, a grass runway that sucked away acceleration, and low pilot currency, which reduces the margin of instinct at exactly the wrong time. Individually, these things are manageable. Annoying, maybe, but manageable. Together, 
They boxed the aircraft into a corner of the flight envelope where recovery was physically impossible. So what do we take away from this? Besides the heartbreak, a few real-world lessons that matter more than any checklist, weight and balance isn't paperwork, it's physics. Heavy plus aft CG changes how the airplane behaves, period. Flap settings are not suggestions, especially not on grass or short fields. Grass runways demand respect. They can easily steal 20 to 30% of your acceleration. Currency matters more than experience. Time since your last flight affects your performance more than total hours ever will. Stall speed isn't fixed. It rises with bank angle, loading, and pitch attitude. And it rises fast when you're near the aerodynamic edge. This accident didn't begin at 40 feet in the air. It began on the ground during those few quiet minutes before the takeoff roll. When the aircraft was configured for a takeoff, it simply wasn't capable of surviving. And once the wheels left the ground, the outcome was already sealed.